Hi everyone, I'm Gerard Scarpacey, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, and we are coming live to you from the Dyson Demo Store here in New York City. Our friends at Dyson said, why don't you invite 50 of the coolest hairdressers that you know to have a little meetup, a little party, and here they are, they're all here in the room, and we've got some incredible educators, we've got like a little lineup, a little... Uh, diversity tonight. We've got three different hairdressers showing three different techniques. We're going to see some cutting and some styling. We're going to start off with my man, Mr. Drew Schaefering. He's got some dry cutting going on here. What's up, Drew? What do you got going on? What's up, Hairbrain World? How are we doing? My, my name is Drew Schaefering. Today, what we're doing is we're taking a, a technique that we've already pre-cut the, pre the existing length. So we've done all the box work, the outline, but what we're going back in is we're, we're going in and we're releasing a lot of weight. And this is a technique that in New York City, I find a lot of women want hair that's a little bit more um, lived in and delicate, and there's a little bit more shape. So raise your hands for those of you in the audience who have clients that come in and they want something new but don't want to change a thing. <laughs> right? Okay. So this is for, for all of us that just raised our hands. What we're doing is we're going in with diagonal back sections parallel to the hairline, and it's giving us a density measure, kind of a barometer for what their hair's like. And then with the, the tips of the scissors pointed down parallel to the hair, we're going through in a swooping motion, and we're closing, going through cutting, similar to what a razor notch would do on, on wet hair. And since we're on dry hair, my comfort level is with the scissor. So it's a very fluid, soft closing motion as we go through down parallel towards the hair. Obviously more parallel towards the hair, softer, horizontal, harder. And we're gonna go through section by section. And these are kind of what I call yoga mo moments in the hair, because we have to pay attention to what's going on. We can't be a typewriter, just click, click, click. Awesome, guys, if you're just joining us, we're here in New York City, we're coming live from the Dyson Demo Store. This is a pretty cool and rare opportunity. The team at Dyson, they really want to partner with as many professional hairdressers as they can, so they reached out to us and said, hey guys, we love the education that you're doing on Facebook. Do you wanna come into our Experience Center, our store on the Fifth Avenue in the heart of Manhattan? Invite some of your friends in. Kel, let's see the friends that we have here. Oh, we have Everybody friends. Say hello. Look at all these beautiful people. Jeremy Hickson, you could be here with us. <laughs> we miss you. So we've got a whole room full of hairdressers eager, eager to learn. I know you guys are home watching, and uh, we're going to see some incredible styling too and get to learn a little bit about what's new with the Dyson Supersonic. And maybe at the end, we might even get a little special surprise. So stay tuned. Hey, Christy. Uh, take one of my fancy with surprises. And mm -hmm. I like that. So as we keep working, again, we set up with diagonal back sections because it works with the hairline that shows up the, the density. For those of you in the audience, how many of you do yoga? Show of hands. Cool, I hate yoga. <laughs> but I tell you one thing that I love about yoga is the idea that it makes us focus on where we're at. And I find like we, we get into autopilot behind the chair. So this technique, what really is important is it'll, it makes us focus on the section that we're working on because the density in the head changes and right now we've already done the blueprint the outline we're going through opening up our scissors wide as we can we're using the fat part of the scissor to melt away some hair and as we go through and we push we're closing and cutting skipping going further down further up and we're just getting rid of the excess bulk. The shape's already in the, in the set right now. Now, Drew, do you feel you need a special dry cutting scissor for this, or do you feel like you can work with any scissor? What's your preference? You know, that's a good question. Three years ago, I would have said I needed 32 different scissors to achieve this result. Now I need one. And the, different, the reason is, you know, some of us prefer different tools. Uh, obviously, dry cutting scissor, more concave, pushes the hair. This, I've gotten more comfortable with having one in my hand that just allows me to do everything that I do. So. Uh, once you master a tool, you can kind of work with it, whether it's a razor, scissor, multiple. Choose your own fancy, and that's what makes us creative, I guess, right? So if you're at home watching and you're just joining us, I want to say welcome. I'm Gerard Scarpacey, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. We're bringing you a very special Hairbrain Live tonight. We're coming to you from the heart of New York City, right on Fifth Avenue, literally the best location you can be, and the Dyson Demo Store. And I want to encourage you, if you have questions, anyone in the audience here or anyone at home, any technical questions or anything at all, just go ahead and key them right in, and I'll share them with our educators tonight. We've got Drew up first, then we've got Mona Balthazar, and then we've got DJ Riggs, and a special little teaser at the end that you're going to want to check out. Hey, Danielle Green. Hi, Danielle Green. <laughs> Radically Curly's in the house. Are there any questions from the audience here tonight? 
they're typing furiously. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I always I feel like there's a there's a big distinction between technical haircutting and emotional haircutting. How many of you feel like you're an emotional person as a creative? Right? We all have whether it's good or bad, different depending on the day. And I feel like when we get into there's there's always technical blueprints that we follow, but then there's also an emotional uh, attachment that we have to something when you say, oh, that just needs to be cut. And I feel like it's really important to work disciplined when we're working emotionally to not get carried away. So as we take each section, we're working very clean, making sure we don't overcut the same section of hair. And the, the other idea of working diagonal sections is it allows us to pivot on a, on a round shape, which gives us a round line. So when this hair falls, whether we make a line of demarcation or not, it's going to be hidden. Horizontal would show up, diagonal would help swing, vertical would help collapse and fall. So we're kind of following the same principles, just kind of breaking outside of the box normally. All right, Drew, we have a couple of great questions coming in. Trixie Torres is wondering if you're avoiding the top layer as you do this. So when you come in, are you avoiding the very top? Amazing question, Trixie. So when we come in, what I'm going to show up really close is if we come in from the top towards my left hip as a right-handed hairdresser, I'm coming to the top section, so I'm going to be cutting the layer if I go from the top. However, if I take that section and I direct it perpendicular to my chest away from my left hip, and my scissor goes from my right shoulder to my left hip, I'm going on the inside of it. So the, the layers and the internal dilution of that weight that I cut becomes diffused through here and it's not affected by the top. So if you have a client that wants uh, kind of more of a one length feel but wants to lose a lot of that bulk, the diagonal sections really help, and then going parallel to the hair and not perpendicular and on top, that makes all the difference in the world. Thank you for that question. Here's another question coming in from Lisa uh, Kakavali. Uh, how do you decide how much to close the scissor? Good question. Okay, so Lisa, so for those of you that uh, you know may razor the hair, this is a great thing to do on, on wet hair. What I love to do on dry hair, Lisa, is I can actually feel how much hair is cut without even looking. As long as my scissors are parallel, I can feel each individual hair that's cut. And so for me, it's a very tact feeling. Um, it's also it's how much is here versus there. And that comes with experience. I think that that's just confidence and experience as we grow as our own stylists with our taste. Susan Silver was wondering if we're going to be using the air wand at all today to style this. Wait a minute. Stick around. Wait a minute. Maybe you'll see. Stick around. We've got all the great tools from Dyson. We'll be using the Dyson Supersonic, which is uh, beautifully designed with a whole bunch of professional aspects to it that we'll discuss when we get into the styling. And maybe at the end, we'll get a little teaser with the air wand. Let's get back into your haircut drill. So as, as we're working, I mean, the shape, as we've said, is already pretty much set into play. And one thing that, that I love doing is I love working with clients' natural texture and working with uh, their fabric of their hair without changing it too much outside of a style. I do a lot of editorial styling, and we can get carried away with so many products. And we're going to use a lot of products in, in the hair tonight as we go to style. But for working it in its natural shape, so many clients want to do something that's more lived in and less perfect, right? They don't want to be super polished. Even if they spend more work on it, they want to look less polished. So just adding some water, even though we've blown it out, is going to help kind of set the shape in, and we're going to detail it according to how it's laying, and then we're going to add some, uh, some strength to the fringe area that's through there. So we're, we're going to go through visually. Did you choose to use water because of her hair type? I did. So especially with Asian hair types, they tend to be a little bit straighter. She has some weight and some curl in her So hair. a little water won't mess with her blow dry, not necessarily? Uh, from my perspective, no. I mean, so, so water will ad adjust the H2O levels and it will change the, the bonds that are straightened now. However, what I know is that we're not going to leave her straight for the, for the rest of the night. So adding some water gives me a little bit of a barometer for how her hair reacts so that when I cut it, I know how to how to kind of adjust for that. So you came through beforehand and you did dry the hair a little bit. I did. You yeah. went through section by section so to we, dry cut. We added some some a little bit of oil to our hair, a little bit of heaviness. So when I think of products, I don't like to think in terms of curl, smooth. I like to think in terms of uh, heavy, soft, light, mattifying, shining, fixating, or non-fixating. So I know that you worked with the Dyson Supersonic to dry it uh, initially. Uh, to, to pre-dry it. Yes. What, how did you feel about the speed of it? I think that's the thing that everyone is saying. They're finding it's drying the hair 
really quickly. How does that? How did that help you? You know what? The thing that I love about the the Dyson is a it's sexy. Don't we all love sexy things? Yeah. All right. So if something sexy, it's better. Uh, number two, it it allows for us to talk with our clients while we're working. Uh, plus the speed, so the double air filter of the new Pro model allows for the intake to be stronger and it gives us more power. So as I'm finessing and finishing our haircut, we're going to go through and actually use our hands more than a brush to add and show the power of the Dyson alone. Because I, I, like, I like this more so than tools in my hand. I like feeling stuff. So we're going we're gonna to strengthen up this shape and what it's cut, it's cut basically square towards the front of the face so it falls shorter to longer, but we're going to square it off and cut parallel to the face so it has a little bit more of a depth and a strength to the bottom. Our buddy Jeremy Hickson, who's a longtime viewer, thank you Jeremy, we appreciate your uh, viewership and support. He's got a question for you, uh, just a general question for dry hair cutting. What are some of the top tips that you would give if somebody wants to get better at dry hair cutting? Uh, Jeremy, great question, man. Uh, you know, I always, my thing is dry hair doesn't lie. Uh, it always shows up and tells you what it's going to do. You know, one thing as I'm cutting right now, I'm cutting a strong line, and so I'm sliding my scissors out from my hands because it's not going to have any push, and it's going to seem like a deli slicer, a little bit stronger. Uh, dry hair cutting, keep adding water back into it as you're working with it because you're working with a, a material that has less forgiveness than when we're working with wet. Plus, a big thing for me is consistent tension. You know, I was always taught tight, tight, tight tension, but if you have inconsistencies in your fingers, it shows up more. So it's more important to be consistent and balanced than to be perfect and, and really, really tight. I noticed the way your fingers are kind of overlapping each other. Does that help you with the consistency? Yeah, you know, for me, I'm a big, big proponent of uh, using our tools for safety measures. So right now, we're using... Uh, a white comb on dark hair and I'm letting that comb find my angle and then I'm just my fingers find my guide for me my comb finds my angle and we're gonna go through and just very very softly slide out cut a line so if we're having a good day those will be balanced they don't need to be twins nothing needs to be twins anymore in, in our world. sisters not twins yeah. that's the famous line <laughs> As long as they're not cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you need to speak to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one last section in the crown, because when we finish her tonight, you know, obviously she has a lot, a lot of hair. We're going to take a big section halo in the crown and just elevate this and soften into it a little bit before we start our, our styling. And, you know, I find that a lot of the tips and tricks that I use backstage for session work, whether it be fashion week, editorial, uh, a lot of that stuff actually translates to clients. And going through and showing them the same tips and tricks that I use helps their day-to-day -day so, so much. So as we soften this, we're gonna grab a little bit of water. Our good friend Christy Ramos is watching, sending some love for dry hair cutting. I'm sure Christy's excited and for our next guest who's gonna be coming up after Drew does some styling, Mona Balthazar, the Mona Cut. Queen the curls. We want to show a lot of diversity, a lot of different textures tonight, and we've even got at the end DJ Riggs doing some men's hair cutting and men's styling. So we've got this beautiful long hair, nice thick texture, then we're going to have a beautiful head of curly hair, and we're going to have men's hair. We're going to show the diversity within the craft, the diversity of the, of the Dyson Supersonic, and how it can be used on so many different hair textures, and of course the incredible skill of these hairdressers. So dampening the hair down a little bit. Now, what's the plan for some of the styling? You know, a lot of it, it, it comes out. I, a big thing for myself is to give people something individual to themselves. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not a believer of everything has to be mechanical, copycat, one, two, three. And so working with some of the talented people I've been fortunate and blessed to work with, they've taught me a lot about what happens here and internally, you know, inside of just like what you're seeing. So we're looking at the shape and what our idea is, we're going to keep this nice and flat, bring the hairline forward use some some small pin curl clips and get this kicking towards the face whether it's going to stay exactly as it is yet to be determined but the idea is start the shape forward and down we're going to bring this up and get wave and kick all coming out and so the water is going to help reactivate the uh, the moisture in the curl the thickening spray that we're using is going to help lift where we need to lift and then uh, as we keep working it, we're going to add more products thinking on terms of shine build smooth, mattify, etc. So this is the type of thing that you're doing on photo shoots and on runways to 
kind of bring that undone look into the hair. Yeah, very much so. I mean, so I feel like it's 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 harder to do the undone look. Yeah, undone, undone well done is, uh, is, that is right? the tricky little yeah. one. That's my favorite line. Yeah. So we're using some thickening products and then some thermal activating products, and then uh, we're going to add a lot of uh, oil to the hair after we start to set the the shape into place, and then we'll mattify the oil because I think in terms of heaviness, and I like heavy hair that hangs. So we're uh, we're setting this everything into play, and then we'll add the finishing afterwards. So first the thickening spray, and now what what are we using now? So this is a thermal like a heat spray. Burn. Yeah. Okay. So this this is the type of spray that you just work everywhere, and then as I go through and manipulate it with my hands, it's gonna kind of stay in place a little bit better. Okay. So if you're just joining us, I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to first of all these 50 amazing hairdressers. That Let's see them us. one more time. Look at these beauties. Yeah. We're broadcasting live from the Dyson Demo Store in the heart of New York City. I mean, literally, like, the, the best venue you can possibly have. We're right on Fifth Avenue. Uh, they invited us in because they really want to embrace the professional hairdresser. They said, hey, Hairbrain, if you want to use our space and if you want to bring people in, do education here, we totally welcome you. They supplied some of the spirits and some of the food. Did you guys have a nice, uh, nice it's little... It's still open if you guys want to... Yeah. You guys are a little too quiet. Who's has yeah. some spirits tonight? Maybe. There we go. Okay. Now we've got a great lineup of educators. We've still got two more to go, and then we've got a special surprise at the end with the air wand that everyone's asking about. So you want to stay tuned so you can really see the effect of the air wand. Drew is now working with his Tyson Supersonic, and uh, you've been working with it for a little bit now. So I tell have. us what are your impressions? You know, I mean, my favorite thing about the, the blow dryer is it's sleek. Uh, being a session stylist, I think the biggest thing is just you just never know where you're going to be working. Uh, it's very compact, but it gets the job done. And I, what I love about it is that the nozzle was increased. I just learned tonight you can grab the sides of the nozzle when it's not hot. So that's a huge thing because I'm always used to burning myself, so shame on me. Yeah, it's got these little like grips on it so it doesn't get as hot here than as if you were to grab it on the top. So that's a great little... And prior to, to this version, the old version, if I would do that, the nozzle would fly off and you know fall across the room. So they strengthen a lot of the things and they really listen to the hairstylist as far as what we need. And uh, it's just on point. I mean, when somebody asks me that, I, don't, I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't use the Dyson. Up to the 1600, uh, you know, volts of, or watts of, whatever, volts, watts. 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 Yep. Uh, of power, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, what I That's learned, why we have to ride. Yeah. yeah. So, Thanks, you know, everyone was saying that it, it dries really quickly, which obviously behind the chair is a great thing because time is money. And Todd was explaining to me why tonight that it's got three times the airflow of the average blow dryer. So it's got the heat, we can all feel that in the 1600 watts, but it's that Dyson technology of airflow. So it's compressing and pumping out three times the, the airflow of the average blow dryer, which, you know, what do you need behind the chair to dry hair? You need heat that's even and consistent, and you need airflow. And then the rest of the stuff is just an amazing benefit here. Uh, the beauty, the sleekness of it. The, there was a first edition that came out, I guess it was a few years ago, after some pro feedback that Dyson received. They've redesigned and upgraded, so this is like a 2.0. As um, Drew mentioned, it's got a new nozzle that's got a really strong magnet so it doesn't really loosen up or fall off at all. It's got an improved filter that'll be easy for you to clean on a regular basis, like every week, which you really should do. I know most of us don't, but if you want your blow dryer to perform, you need to clean it at least every week. And then one of the things that I love the most is it's got an extra long cord, it's 11 feet, which really lets you work around the client. So those are some of the benefits, and again, thank you Dyson for providing this incredible space for us to work. Let's get into this drawing technique, Drew. So one of the things that, you know, I was taught early in my career, I jumped into Fashion Week uh, just out of school, and. One thing that I was taught was that your hands and air kind of can manipulate the hair differently from a brush. Once we pick up a brush, we become so mechanical and kind of A, B, C, D cookie cutter. So as I'm going through, and I'm going to continue to do this backstage, we're going through and putting some movement into the hair and continue just working to put some bend in the hair so that the increased nozzle, the airflow, and this is on low, we kick it up to high, and once we start to just work it with our hands, the same way that she would be working it at home, just loosen it up and put some bend into the hair. And so whether it's the round brush or the airflow, we're going to keep working, putting bend into the hair, keeping this nice and smooth around her face, 
And then we're really gonna use the round brush and kick this up and give her a very Bardo modern feel through it. So we're gonna keep working backstage. Let's, Let's hear it for Drew. Yeah. All right guys, Drew's gonna take the beautiful model backstage and continue to style. Now we had a very perfect timing question that came in from Angela Crawford. She was asking, is there a diffuser for this dryer? And yes, there is. And you're gonna to get to see that in the works right now with Mona Balthazar, the Mona Cut. Mona's going to be showing you her signature way of working with curly hair, drying it. And I have to say, one of the things that I love the most about the Dyson is the diffuser. As someone who works a lot with natural hair, um, I've never really been that happy with any of the diffusers I've worked with before. And this one has been really incredible. It's really kind of blown my mind. Here she is, Mona Balthazar, our beautiful model. Germania. Germania. Say hi, guys. So Mona's already starting now. I love the surround with, sound. Uh, with, with curly hair, and she's got a beautiful process to it. I'm going to let Mona explain that process and uh, talk a little bit about the drawing. Okay. So um, this is Germania. Uh, she is actually my client. Um, I've known her for over two years. So she's psyched to be getting a free haircut right yeah. now. Well, well, yes. I met her about two months ago. Yeah. And, you know, I, I asked if she wanted to be my model because she is trying to grow her hair out. So we're going to do a little bit more um, cutting on the bangs. But we're going to try to... Uh, and I'm going to explain about our texture later. Later. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. So... I already dried her hair. I washed her hair. I conditioned it. I put products already in her hair just because I only have 20 minutes. But on a normal day or client, it could take up to two hours or maybe three. Um, she does have a lot of hair. Um, so just for time purposes, I did dry her already. She's probably about 90% dry. I'm going to show you guys a little, uh, just a few minutes of just... Um, using the Dyson, but I did fully use the Dyson. Usually, this is my process. It's like I'll do the shampoo, the conditioning. I'll put the product in the uh, shampoo bowl if she's if, if her hair is like really uh, dry. You need to you know I use a lot of water, and I'll put her under the dry just for a few minutes. But this time because I didn't have the opportunity to do that. But the fact that the Dyson is uh, an amazing blow dryer, it, it uh, eliminates the frizz, which is great because the blow dryer that I do use actually if it's too wet it does create a lot more frizz but the Dyson actually because the airflow which what I've noticed is that it's really really smooth even whether you put it on the highest it's actually really smooth so it doesn't obviously she has a natural frizz but if I were to use if I, if I didn't use the, the Dyson in, my, in just my observation compared to my, what I'm using now, it will make her hair even busier. So that's just kind of the comparison from my experience with it so far. Um, and I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to just bend a little bit. I'm going to cut right into it. Um, so Germanion has um, multiple texture in her hair. As you can kind of see, if you turn this way. And She's, when you mean multiple texture, you mean different curl pattern? Yes. Uh, I guess there is a tech no both. Nice. So there is there she people kind of tend to have um, get confused by texture. There's two different texture: the curl pattern and the actual uh, texture of her hair. So you mean she, density? No, you know the the feel of her hair: coarse, medium, fine. She has it all over. She's really really coily and tight right in here, but then she loosens up right in here. You see how she's. She's a little wavy compared to what she has right underneath, which means this shrinks for her. But the fact that she wants her hair longer, it's a challenge for her because no matter how much... Her hairline is going to shrink. Yeah, it's always going to shrink. We're always going to try to cut this sh always shorter. Until her hairline yeah. drops. Well, hopefully it's stretch enough. I think sometimes you've got to just let the hair grow on its own and then eventually it'll relax. So I'm going to go and because I am going to focus a little bit more on her bangs, I'm going to shape her bangs a little bit more right in here, okay? So I'm going to dry cut, which I'm more, in her texture, I would dry cut for the most part. So Mona, you, your process was to shampoo, comb through a nice rich conditioner, really detangle the hair, let it sit for a few minutes, and then you come in with the diffuser. And you know, when you're using that diffuser, do you just hold it from a distance? Do you scoop the hair? How did you get it to the state that it's in now? You, um, again, she has density. I'd have to open up her hair in different sections. 
um, just because you've got to get into her root as well as her end. So you have to kind of distribute it in different places. I do try to scoop it and I also try to keep it away from her hair just to kind of give, get that airflow going. So depending on how you dry it, it's yeah. going to affect the cut completely. Affect it. Mm -hmm. it could, the curl could be tighter or looser. Exactly. Okay, you so now explain attention. your actual technique here. To me, and I know you, I know you're like a knitter. Mm -hmm. So every time I watch you, it's almost like you're knitting the curls. Can you explain exactly what you're doing with each curl? Again, like as I, yeah, I'm going to keep talking about how her texture, curl pattern is very different. So I go um, as, I cut, from whatever texture she's she's giving me at that moment. If this is looser, you know, I can either carve it or I can actually, I try to, I choose to cut it on the blunter side. Let's say if she was a little, a lot looser and less uh, coarse and finer hair, I would probably be able to carve it. But her hair is already so solid, you don't want to weaken the front of her hair. You want to keep it all kind of cohesive. Um, so you literally pull the curl now. Are you twisting it or are you just turning it a little bit? I'm turning it. I'm going with the flow of the uh, the curvature of the curl. It just seems like a slight little twist. You don't do like a whole bunch of. It's not like a tight, no. tight twist. It, no, not really. I, you know, if she had a different type of texture, I probably would do that. Do that, but no. Right now, I'm just kind of lightly pulling it because she is already. This is the process of almost like when my when I'm actually refining it at the salon. Okay, this isn't the first initial haircut. I've already, this is with me finishing her. So when you pull out, yeah. so when you pull out each strand, you're, you're deciding at that moment, is it, is it lighter, is it tighter, is it, do I need to cut blunt, do I need to do? I've kind of, kind of decided that when I looked at, I looked at the face, of the, what I wanted to give her as far as like, the, her bangs and our so almost hair. in the consultation then yeah. you you kind of almost yeah. decided how you're going to cut I'm this. I'm very aware. I don't. Uh, it might look like I am actually just cutting into it. There is, I guess that's the hardest part. It's like what's in your head to try to uh, tell explain everyone. it. Yeah. So lots of people are joining us. I just want to give them a shout out. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Kia. We are here at a very special event. I'm going to show you why. Turn around, Cal. Kelly's behind the camera. She hi, guys. Say hi, everyone. Look at these beauties we have with us in Midtown. We've got over 50 hairdressers welcomed in by the, uh, by the Dyson team here. They wanted to have a special event and welcome pro professional hairdressers into the space as a resource. I said, hey, guys, why don't you do one of your HB lives here? So if you're just joining us, we're on our second demo. We had Drew Schaefering first. Now we're working with Mona Balthazar. Lots of different textures in the hair. Here we're working with really beautiful curly hair. And Mona's going to walk us through the cut and then talk about using her Dyson Supersonic for styling and drying curly hair. So I like to shake it up just a little bit just to see if where the hair is falling. Um, you know, just kind of paying attention to the length where the hair Here's a great. She, she's a very great example. If you know, when you get a chance later, if she'll let you touch her hair. If she'll um, let you, I like that. For it. <laughs> so Mona, we have a great question from the audience. Molly Benko, who's here. Where are you, Molly? Hello. Hey, Molly. How do you decide whether you're going to cut wet or dry? Do you always do your curls dry, or do you do? What's your thought process there with curly hair? With curly hair, dry? Um, I will prefer to cut dry for the most part. Not always. I have done a live. Uh, HB, uh, where I cut the model's hair wet and she had curly hair. Uh, for the most part, finer hair, wavy hair, less frizz, I would actually cut it wet just because also it depends on the, the haircut, but for the most part. Is that because you can control the shape? Yes. I can control the shape if, let's say, if she wanted a bob. Actually, no, I'm going to take that back. Okay. No, it's really about the, the texture of the hair, meaning the pattern and the actual texture. If it's finer to medium texture, less frizz, I will cut it wet. So I guess the moral of the story here is that you kind of have to go do different things, go with it, develop a lot of, of skill and experience, and then start to trust your instinct. You don't do anything ever the same way twice. You know, I am, you know, I am trying to like pay attention as far as like, you know, the technique and what it is. Obviously, as I cut every client, every client here is different, but I am trying to figure out the a little bit more of a, a general rule of thumb and how to cut curly hair it is a challenging thing because every time I get someone on my chair it's always a different thing but you know it's it's time right we're going to develop that what, what do you find you know with your guests with, at home how do you feel they cope with their hair 
Are they comfortable with blow drying? You know, is it is this something they find challenging? Is there any advice you give them when they want to dry their hair at home? Of course, you know, a lot of curly hair. Um, again, I've known your money was had heat damage. I did a big chop on her, like pixie, and even then she still had a lot of heat damage on the top of her hair. Who would have thought? She probably wouldn't have thought her hair was going to be this. No, I didn't know her was going to be this. So your hair previously <laughs> was heat damage or relaxed? Oh, yeah, or? it was heat damage from like three years, years of straightening it. Yeah, straightening it. Yeah. 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 And, and what? It is, it's going to be a struggle. It's always going to be a question. It's always going to be something that, you know, a lot of curly girls are going to question their hair. And as hairdressers, it's our job to really pay attention to that and, like, really, you know, that's that's where I'm going right now. It's like, it is it is, it is challenging. Yes, I do. I enjoy it. I cut it. But I still have to question everything I do because, like I said, everything that comes in and out of my suite, it's a different set of hair. Everyone has their own you know, questions about about their hair, but at the end of the day, it's really about curly girls, you, you, they have to embrace it and they have to love their hair. And you as a hairstylist need to also be sensitive to the fact that it's also new to them. It's new to our industry. It's so great. we have a lot to learn, you know? So here's something that I was interested to learn uh, over the past few weeks, getting more familiar with Dyson, is that the dryer itself is like a smart dryer. So that heat damage, you know, if you did want to blow dry your hair straight from time to time, the dryer itself will sense when it's damaging the hair and it'll adjust, adjust the temperature. So if you want to have it both ways and not damage your hair, that's one of the, the beautiful things behind this is that it's got a, a, a control within it that allows it to know when the hair is getting too hot and it'll adjust the temperature so it doesn't burn, which I think is, you know, is a great thing because we don't want to damage hair as professionals, and we see it a lot. You know, DJ Riggs, who's going to come out next, he said the one thing that he noticed is he ne the hair never smokes when he uses it. You know, and as a hairdresser, we all know what that means. Yeah. You're going, and all of a sudden you see some smoke, and you're like, okay. Maybe, yeah, tell you better turn it down or step away. He said, and I, and I told him, you know, he didn't know about that adjustment that's built in. It's like a smart dryer. It's got that technology to prevent the burning. All right, let's get back into the cutting here because I can see the shape is really developing beautifully. So, Mona, I have a question. You seem to pull out hair like at random, but but specifically, uh, you're pulling it up, you're pulling it down. Is it where the curl lives or where you want it to live? Okay, so again, as I explained earlier, I'm not touching this part of her hair. I'm kind of blending it to one her actual curl pattern because she is looser over here. I have the ability to, uh, actually cut it even like cut a big chunk of it because it's not where she can lose this length because we're trying to bring them together somehow so as i'm pulling i am pulling not in the random but i am trying to soften this so if i were to cut it rigidly as if like you were taking together, sections it would it would be too harsh look at her hair so much volume we're trying to soften it so me picking it randomly and creating more of like um uh, short to long, so to speak, um, it's going to soften and it's going to create a different movement in her hair. So we have a question from Courtney Harris um, about, you know, how do you determine where you're going to over direct that piece? You know, how do you determine if you should lift it or hold it down or bring it forward or bring it back? Um, so as I explained earlier, as I'm cutting in her, as I'm softening her hair, so I am moving it forward because I don't want it rigid, but again, if I am going to create more of a structured haircut, let's say her hair was all this uh, looser texture, less of that uh, tighter curls, I would probably be a little bit, you're going to see me go from one one section to another. I am, uh, right now, as you see me giving her a little bit more of like a movement, a little bit more organic on the top. Cool. I want to give some great shout outs. We've got our friend Anna Pacito watching. Hey, Thanks Anna. watching, Anna. Uh, Jeremy Hickson gave me a little props on my blazer. He always like, does. He always up. does, you Jeremy. Know, if you didn't know, we're in, in Fifth Avenue. This is probably the fanciest address that most of us have ever been in here. We've been welcomed into the Dyson demo store, a whole bunch of our fellow hairdressers from New York and the tri state area for a little bit of a meetup, some wine and cheese, and then some great education. So, Mona. I'm just going to point out, you see right in here, she gets heavy, right? She gets this like weight right in here. So same thing what I did on the other side, because she is also loose on this side, 
you watch me the over direction question i'm gonna move if you watch me move it forward some i move right in in its place i'm gonna lift it up because again when you elevate right you take the weight out same concept it's just you know uh it is a little bit kind of confusing when we're working with curly hair and we're like but it's has the texture but it's still hair you just gotta watch and pay attention to it just as much as we're so trained to do straight hair take that same concept and do it on curly hair but just pay a little bit more attention to it so how do you know at the exact precise place to cut is that feeling is that experience that's feeling yes that's feeling. so how do you know are you are you an inch above are you an inch below is that feeling is that, is that technique feeling? because um it's both feeling and technique because again, I know I have the room to be able to go, I'm gonna go forward, I'm gonna go sideways because I want the hair to dance, I want the hair to move, I have the ability because I'm paying attention to her texture and again, I've also done her hair before. Um, I'm just gonna go right in and soften this corner a little bit more. Um, not gonna do too much in the back, but I wanted to just kind of blend in most of her texture so that way when we grow in, when she grows in, her hair, it's gonna, she's gonna start to see more light, okay? Right now, she's not too crazy about the shape. She wants her length. She's always gonna have volume. That's not, she's never gonna worry about that. No. no. <laughs> I'm gonna give her more volume after this. It's looking beautiful. Lots of people at home loving it. Now, you know, some people, in, and we've had Mona's technique demonstrated many times, people always ask, well, what happens if she wears it straight? What, what, she can wear it straight. Yeah. She can, she won't, probably won't be able to wear it super thick straight where it's flat iron. No, she can get it in rollers and she can do a little bend on the end. So the idea here is that I mean, you're still cutting each piece, each curl cleanly and indefinitely. So it's not just like they're thin on the ends. They're actually quite kind of club cut yeah, on the ends. To, yes, you so want it's to like a that. textured layer cut. Mm -hmm. She could blow it out or you know uh, use rollers or use the air wand or something like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. The shape's looking fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to diffuse her hair a little bit more and then use the nozzle as well. Okay, so you're going to start with yeah. the, uh, the diffuser attachment. Can we just show everyone how powerful that magnet is? Oh my so, god, it's so good. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been redesigned. If any of you had the first edition, a lot of hairdressers said they wanted a more powerful right. magnet. So I mean, this thing is like so strong. It really, I think it's like 10 times stronger than the original magnet. It would have like if difference. you hit it or bump it or... We haven't seen it come off yet. No, I haven't. I mean, it's, it's, you can feel the power going like together. All right, so now talk to us about, you know, diffusing. What's your, what's your choice of heat setting and... Uh, I, it, this thing gets really hot. And the, the good thing about it is that now I do mostly curly. I actually keep it, you have the ability to be able to then you have it. You have one. This is the flow of air, and this is the, I never go past that. I either I'm always doing you're on the number curve. one, or if I'm finishing, I do the cool where it actually you know how some of the blow dryer you have to press the blue button for cool. This one is cool. It also has a cool button, but you don't need it because it's, it's actually just a nice air. It's not neither cold or warm. Yeah, and it, it comes with actually three different attachments, the pro one. So you saw Drew earlier working with what's really been designed for beautiful round brushing because it's quite wide but very narrow and then the edges stay cool. And then you've got like the power drying attachment which is great for those of us who do a lot of maybe flat brush, flat wrapping or kind of power drying. So the professional version comes with the three different attachments. And I mean, this is like the perfect diffuser. I love that open basket with fingers. It really works incredibly well. So give us any tips that you have here, Mona, to dry curly hair. I think it's such a challenge, even for the best hairdressers. Yeah. So it, as long as the product that's in her hair has some holes, um, you want to, I put um, a, like a curl activator, which is kind of like a, a mesh between a cream and a gel, but I did um, put a uh, leave-in underneath that. And so now, don't be afraid to touch the hair, frizz the hair, your product is gonna control and like, her conditioning and treatment in the bowl before the um, product is going to control her frizz, okay? She's gonna have natural frizz. It's hard to take that away. 
All right, so Mona's in her last minute here, kind of finishing up. If she's got any more little work to do, she's going to do it back in the in the VIP room, and we're going to bring all the models back in the end. So, in kind of closing, Mona, what are some of your final thoughts here? Um, you know, I, 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 if I'm going to speak about the Dyson, I do love the Dyson, and again. We are uh, in this, in, in our industry wants the curly hair. And us hairdressers, a lot of people who want to be interested in it, just go, don't be afraid of it. You know, it's like find your models. It might be hard, but, you know, just keep trying, depending on your, your demographic. I mean, here in New York, I'm grateful to be able to have all the texture I can, I can get in my chair. Awesome. Um, Let's hear from Ona Balthazar. So Mona's going to take the beautiful model backstage and walk a little bit more, and we're going to bring in our third, our third hairdresser in just a moment here. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to work a little bit with men's cutting and styling, which is definitely something that we're excited to share. So if you're just joining us, I wanted to let you know that we're coming to you live from the Dyson Demo Store in New York City. They were kind enough to invite us and 50 of our closest friends. Say hi, guys. Kelly, show everybody at home watching. Sure. Look at these beauties here with us today. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Dyson wanted to really reach out to professional hairdressers, so they contacted us at Hairbrand and said, hey, we'd love to give you a space. We'd love to invite hairdressers in. We'll give them some wine and cheese. You guys can do educational events. And if you like our tools, please share them. So I reached out to three of my favorite educators. Right over here is my number one man right here, Mr. DJ Riggs. I said, DJ, so DJ, you want to come do a little education at Dyson? He said, I'm there. So, of course, he's going to bring you something special and unique because DJ Riggs always does. What do you got planned for us tonight? Wow, that's a lot to live up to. Right? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I say, pat out you guys back for being here. Thank you guys for coming out and having fun with Harry and Dyson. I'm such a, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here with Barry Bakken as well as the other artist that's here. So let's give us all a round of applause. So basically what I'm going to be working on, and one of the key things that, that happens right now in our industry, we've seen the increase inside of men's hairdressing. Now, notice I don't say men's cutting, men's hairdressing, meaning that it's a lot of more dressing techniques that's going on. I'm going to start off with my particular model and work with a particular shape where I'm just going to clean up the edges so you will see a little bit of cutting involved inside of the shape. But then I'm going to show you how I'm going to prep the top, utilizing the Dyson blow dry, and kind of showing you a little bit more about the technologies that I'm going to use, utilize with it. So I'm just going to start off with the sides, utilizing scissor over comb, just to kind of get up some graduation in it. All right. Any questions, you guys can feel free to ask me. Yep. So anybody watching at home or here in the audience, if you've got questions for DJ, he's one of the best educators in the industry, just go ahead and type those questions in. I'll be sure to share them with him. Right now, just kind of collapsing that weight, just coming from the round of the head shape. The key thing I'm thinking about is kind of creating a disconnection with a slight undercut inside of that shape. So we don't want to go too far with it, but just want to get rid of some of that roundness that takes place inside of the hair. Now, I've, I actually pre-prepped the hair with a little bit of some prep lotion just to make sure that it's sustainable for my styling techniques that I utilize afterwards. So let's talk a little bit about scissor control because it seems like you really have like such a great control that people sometimes find it difficult to do scissor over comb. H how do you get that mastery of controlling that tool? I like to think about it in the sense of first just understanding the type of blades you're working with. I mean, I think there's so many different type of blades out there. Understand, when I say understand the blades you're working with, weight, balance, the length of the actual shear. And also the brand. I feel like inner brand, all that differs as well. Exactly. And like right now, I'm utilizing the Kuos. Gerard, you've always been better at pronouncing this name. Kuho. Yeah, Kuho. I always say it wrong, but I love these freaking blades. <laughs> so if any Kuho reps out there or anything, my bad. But Gerard's here for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think as hairdressers in general, you know, as you really start to love the craft, you, you really start to think about your tools, right? I, I find a lot of hairdressers become so dedicated and they think about their comb, they think about their scissor. And that's why we're here tonight, because we found that this Dyson blow dryer is the newest tool, and the fact that it's got this complete professional upgrade is, is so important. So again, scissors important, the comb's important, they, and the thing about them looking great is important as well. All right, let's get back into scissor over comb. What are some tips you can give to people at home that maybe want to get more comfortable with the technique, DJ? Pivoting. Understand how to pivot your comb. If you understand the concept of pivoting your combs, it allows you to have a placement for which way you want your shears to flow. A lot of times we're kind of putting the comb in without pivoting. 
Therefore, you're not on the head shape. And if you're not on the head shape, you don't have good head shape awareness, right? Mm -hmm. How many times have you seen yourself do this and you notice ruffles have ridges? <laughs> There's ridges every freaking way, right? So with this, if we pivot, look at that flow. I'm just pivoting around the shape, right? Well, you're basically trying to graduate the hair, would you say, right now, from short at the hairline to longer on the inside? Exactly. So is that how the pivoting plays in? The pivoting plays in just because it actually gives me the, the cut, what I'm doing, allows the actual flow that I'm working with in terms of the goal is to do this, make sure that I don't miss a beat. Now, the actual pivoting helps my flow. Now, how much I lean the comb, that's my graduation. So those are key different points inside of that. Pivoting helps my flow. The way I angle in or out helps my graduation, but keeping my shears consistently moving, that allows me not to have the ridges that normally happens. Now you mentioned earlier that you're seeing a lot more hairdressing for men. So you're actually seeing, are you seeing men at home styling their hair more? Is it becoming a bigger part of our business? It's becoming so big, guys, that our education on what we're actually teaching them has to kind of step up a bit more. Because now guys are starting to feel like they can do it themselves. Now, the one thing is this, remember, the, the stylist is still the educator, all right? So we educate the client on how to do it, therefore the tools help to make it easier for them at home. This is where Dyson comes in, guys, with this type of concept. But you also have to know how to utilize that type of technology inside of the salon. So we have a couple questions from people watching at home. Uh, Diane uh, Osaurus Rex is asking, why are you working with the city? I, I tell you, I'm telling you, man. Diane, you know, Diane Osaurus Rex. I like your name. It's not me. No, no, it's a great name. Uh, she's asking, you know, why, why choose scissors or shears over clippers at this point? Well, here goes the interesting thing. I never chose anything over. I just said what I'm going to be using, right? Stop doing that, guys. Stop choosing something over the next. This is our industry. All this stuff is to help us, right? All these little things of, oh, this, oh, come on, mate. Just freaking learn how to work it all. Right? Come on. Right? Yeah. Let's, Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah. Well, that, that's a great segue just to say if you turn around and show this audience, we've got them all on these nice little benches here. It's like we're still hanging little, with us yeah. in Midtown. Yeah. Over 50 hairdressers that came out tonight for some great education from our friends and some of our educators. And thank you again to Dyson for this incredible space and allowing us to do it. I hope they'll let us come back and do it again. I don't know. But there's still more. DJ's gonna continue here. He's gonna show you some styling techniques using the Dyson Supersonic on the top. And then we're gonna bring back all the models and don't go anywhere because I'm sure you guys have heard about Dyson's newest tool, the Air Wand. Yeah. We're gonna bring in Todd, who is a hairdresser that actually works for Dyson. And he's gonna show us some of the newest, newest stuff that's happening with the air wand. So you definitely wanna stick around for that. I know everybody here in the audience is interested and I'm sure at home, everybody watching is interested as well. All right, so DJ's getting a little powered, powered up yeah, here. Yeah, trying to get powered up until then. Is it, are we good? Just getting the edges powered up. So why, uh, why are you thinking about moving to the edger? Well, this is the thing, refine. I swear, the one thing with men's cut, a lot of times, you know, you see people that be like, oh, I, I'm just gonna keep it rough because that's what's in right now. No, man, it ain't never in not to be fresh. Make it fresh, refine the looks, all right? Ain't nothing cool about not being refined. So with this being said, I'm gonna just go in and just kind of show you how I'm gonna do that. But I'm gonna let these guys work on power. I'll do it with my scissors. That's what I mean. Learn how to work every tool for everything. <laughs> every tool for me. So just working on the edges. Just want to make sure I give that bit of consistency. Working right there. So in this case, you can just go in with the clipper right on the skin to clean that up. It's the scissor right on the skin. Right, here. exactly. Just learning how to do it all to make sure that you're in on it. But it is certain tools that's made for a particular reason. So the key thing for me is making sure that that accessibility is there. Am I good right now? Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. come turn me on and see yeah, if I'm good. Not quite yet. All right. And now just working that right down to the neckline. So well, what have you been up to in 2018? I know it's been a big year for you. You've been doing a lot of different shows and events. What, what were some of the things that you did that really, I hear that buzzing sound. Oh, and nothing makes me feel better than that. Listen, I'm a bro. Like, hey, bros, I'm not, bros, we like, we like, hold on, we like this noise. Like, you can't, 
you know what I mean? I can get it, Drew. You know what I'm saying? Like, we really know if it could happen. So, so basically, just to kind of like recap a little bit of what Gerard, you were asking, like, what we're doing is amazing, like, by really working and understanding the psychology of hairdressing and what's going on in the hairdressing world and kind of finding the way of how to communicate with the industry to kind of attack the greater, the greater industry, to get artists involved in it. Hairbrain has done such a great job at opening up the door of communication and helping artists feel more empowered, more enlightened. So what we want to do is how do we complement that? And with that, what we're working on is creating one of the first co-ops for this industry that's be launching in 2019. So I want you guys to check us out. We started with the residency program, and now we're moving into the full-on co-op situation. So right now you guys are hearing it first, so really look out for us. You can kind of go to uh, Main Entrance Artists to find more information about it. We'll share it with Hairbrain because they really want to be one of the partners inside of this because these guys' dedication to education is, 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 like, is far beyond what's happening right now. So our goal is to kind of continue the working that and working with different companies that they work with, like Dyson and other things, to kind of help promote that. All right? That gives a little bit. Amazing. So just tightening up those edges. That's right. So now that you're all powered up and juiced up, just working around the edge, detailing. So this detail work is, is you know, I can remember learning early in my career with men's haircutting that you can do like the perfect shape, perfect haircut, and then leave like one straight piece around the edge and it's a bad haircut. Mm -hmm. The shape could be perfect, but one little piece sticking out over the ear, and oh that's God. it. So it's that detail. That final like 2% is equal to like 80% of, the, of the, um, the success of the look. And guys, you see this pivoting is taking place now coming from the front. Notice when I work the front, I pivot away from the face, yeah? And then when I work from the back, I'm pivoting towards the face. One of the key things to think about when you're working it, and it keeps from having those demarcations that take place around there. So there's that pivot action happening. Yeah, pivoting happening right now, working my way towards the face. So I'm super excited to see what you're gonna do with the top. DJ has promised us he's gonna do some kind of cool wave using the power of the, of the, the supersonic. Yes. One of the things I noticed about the supersonic, besides actually the auto-tuning of it, and when I say auto-tune, I mean how it does not allow you to feel like you can't talk to your clients. Like, we're educating with people. Like, so when we're talking to people and styling, that's our education time, guys. That's how we sell products. We need to be able to communicate. So if we can't communicate while we're styling, how do we get these clients to really know what's going on? I, I that, that's, that's a huge really point thing. because, yeah, that time when you're styling hair, you're supposed to be teaching. And I think a lot of us maybe say it's so loud and it's so heavy that we give up on that. And I don't think it's one of the things we haven't touched on is the weight and the balance here. Um, what, what's really different about the Dyson is that the motor is in the handle. So the whole balance is completely different from what we're used to where it's kind of back heavy and top heavy. So the ergonomics are there, and then because it's quiet enough, you can talk. And if you can talk, you can teach. And if you can teach, you can you sell. sell. You can sell, yeah. If you can teach, you can sell. Yeah. I mean, I feel like selling is, it comes with our industry, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. I mean, it's, it's the nature, you know? Everything hands in hand and tail, hand in tail. So I well, feel like, And, and you clients, know. whenever they're surveyed, one of the things that they say the most is that they never learned how to style their hair. Oh, they right. never learned what tools to use. They never learned what products to use. So it's not them that doesn't want to learn. It's us that for some reason, you know, and maybe it's because we're tired or the blow dryer is too heavy or too loud. So all these little micro improvements should help. And I'm not sure about you guys, if you're on set, uh, or work with any of these tools on set or work with dryers on set, but I definitely feel like this has really maximized our ability of how we can work on set with the different attachments, the different tools, the different mechanical aspects of the drive that allows us to be able to work more fluidly on set. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more of that in a second. Let's use this to get some of the hair off for you. you and we're just gonna channel this around the edges just to make sure Mikey, we call it hair hips. This is removing hair hips. You know, hair, hair, hips. hair hips. <laughs> <laughs> channel cut, give me the hair freaking hips. Now. Yeah. A lot of love coming in from our friends. Our buddy Steven Statlin is watching. I think he's a big, big DJ Riggs fan. Right, says Steve. he's loving it. What's up, Steven? Great to have you here. Yvonne Erickson is loving this. Ricky Banks, the work with the Shears is on point. 
uh, Tamika suggests DJ, you're killing it. Thank you guys, thanks for all the love. There's still more, don't go anywhere. DJ's gonna show us a little bit of styling on the top, and then we're gonna bring in Todd, who's one of the house stylists for Dyson, and he's gonna show us the air wand. I know you guys are excited, everybody here is interested in it. It's the newest tool from Dyson. Yeah, they've just upgraded the Dyson Supersonic. They've gotten a lot of pro feedback about it, and they, they made the changes. It's the one thing that everybody says is that Dyson listened. They improve the filter so it's easier to clean because a clean filter needs a powerful blow dryer. They've made the nozzle attachment stronger and they've customized some of them that are incredible for, oh, for round brushing. And uh, the diffuser, they've made a perfect diffuser for doing beautiful, beautiful curly work. Added extra length to the cord so that you can work around all the way around your client. And uh, the air wand is the next innovation. We're excited to see that. All right, DJ, let's get back into what's happening here. All right, guys, so now I'm just gonna add just a little bit of a new wave, just to complement what's happening on the top. So notice I'm using just the teeth part of my edger. I'm just gonna go in, and I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that new wave element that I'm doing right now. So just really defining the hairline. Define the hairline with a wave. Complement a wave, what I'm gonna be doing on the top. So just making a whole haircut speak, you know? I think total look, total concept. There's nothing ever wrong with that. Wow, Kelly, you're so good getting Hi, right in there. Yeah, we're just right. hanging out. got a great view. That's why I made sure I had some gum earlier. <laughs> I wouldn't <Yeah>. care. <laughs> All right, guys, so as I'm working in that, just gonna clean up just around that back end and then come meet it on the opposite side. Danielle Damn. Green is mm -hmm. uh, saying her clients love the Supersonic as well. I mean, that, that's true. I mean, one of the things that we noticed is when using it in a salon behind the chair, people say, is that, what is it if they don't know? And second of all, is that the Dyson? So they think that, you know, you're, you're being professional, you're upgrading your tools, which is super important. So thanks for pointing that out, Danielle. All right, guys, so now you can see the wave. We just have that complimenting those shape. Now what we're gonna do, Let's go ahead and take this top up. All right, we're gonna see this this wave now. Yeah, let's go ahead and go in. You need me to set you up? Let's set up. Let's get some of that hair out of there. Yep. Barry, where's Barry at? Oi. Come on, B. Let's bring in the this second This is my partner, Barry. Hi. Hi. Barry Bakken. DJ and Barry work together every day with their brand main entrance artists. They've got a salon. They do education all over, and they're an incredible team. Thank so I'll you. give that off yeah. to you. You've got all your attachments. Can over you here. put that long nozzle on that for me? I love the mat. See, normally, now I'm gonna say this. Normally in the salon, Barry is helping me. She does all the color. So when I say put attachments, I'm, I'm just like, like huh? what? See, so so this is great. I love uh, this. Uh, 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 <laughs> so guys, just plant, spraying a little bit of the prep spray inside of the hair first, just to kind of get it sorted out. And just to make sure I'm on point. Any type of details right there. So this right here, guys, when it comes to men styling, when you have the right tools, these are the things that will really attract your guy clients. Not everyone has to have the same look. It's more about how do you style the hair? How do you finish it? How do you make it complement something? And then finding the right things to utilize to make it work for you. All right. Let's get a little cream and... Like one of the great things also about the Dyson is this power drying ability. And the fact that it has the two different nozzle attachments that you can power dry with. All right, guys. How do you use them differently, the attachments? Like you've got that finer, tighter one, and you've got the bigger, wider one. When do you switch them up? Well, here goes the difference. Barry, the client needs to be power dried. Which one does she use? The big one. The big, the big one. <laughs> you know, or that's not. A, you know, because one of the things when you go focal when you try to power dry, it's too much hair, hair directed, so it winds up really frizzing. So let's get a close up so we can see what that means. You can see the difference between the wider one for power drying and really pushing the air around, and then the finer one for detailed styling, you know, right on the brush or something creative like what DJ is going to do here. All right, guys, so now as I come in with the hair, just to comb it. Now I'll turn the dry on for me. All right, now I'm going to show you guys something. You can, that's fine, but I'm okay. Okay. Guys. So right here, you guys see how low that air can get? 
normally you can't really work with the dry when you turn it low because the air is still too high. Now, with this, by taking this all the way down on the opposite side, you see where that red gets? Now, I can come in. I can use the actual dryer, the finger waves I have on. I actually set and get at the roots. We used to call it freeze drying back in the day. So you literally got that right on his scalp, so that temperature obviously is, you've controlled that a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's still warm enough to, to manipulate the hair or you've got it on completely cold? Guys, look at this. Let me turn it to you guys so you can see. Look all the way down, Mikey. You guys see that? I'm freeze drying that hair. Remember salt and pepper back in the day? You guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> don't trip, don't trip. All right, so now just going in with that same technique. And that's just to give some control to it. Now after I do that, lift up slightly. I'm just gonna use, I'm using the nozzle. I'm glad it's so much longer now. So now I can actually incorporate it in my styling routine. So DJ, you're someone who's been using a Dyson for a while. You had one of the first ones that came out. Yes. And the, now uh, you've been working with the newer one and you notice a difference? Yes. One thing is this, the attachments better, the sound better, the cord better. And also the ability that it's heat recognizable. Guys, you will not smoke hair. I mean, one of the key, the key turn offs, I love styling hair, but when it smokes, it's a turn off to my skills, right? It's the same way to be for your skills. The clients, it removes all the, the things that's there. So, well, what do people always say? Oh, no, that's not burning, it's just evaporating the product. It's just product <laughs> evaporation. <laughs> so, guys, just kind of going in and just making sure. I'm just freeze drying that hair. But notice how I'm doing it, it's still effortless. It's called giving it hair direction without overkill. But normally you can't really work that way. You see? Because it's just a bit more. And for me, I'm all about that. Remember I said new wave. Let me just kind of show you guys from the profile how that starts to work in, okay? Now, and I ran. Now, <laughs> now, right, now you switch to the diffuser. Yep, because now I'm going to set. You're going to set that See, in. See, there was a control approach. Now I'm going to come in. And I'm going to set what I've already put in. Yeah, we actually had somebody at home, or maybe they're in the audience, Susan Silver, shouted out. The one thing we haven't mentioned, they've also extended the warranty on the Pro Dryer. It's now a two-year warranty. It used to be only one year for the Pro Dryer, and they extended it to a full two-year. So that's really important because, you know, we, we work our dryers hard, and, you know, having a two-year warranty will make a big, big difference. All right, so we're seeing this incredible finish. Uh, we do have one last treat for you guys at home. So, uh, right. DJ, if you're going to be working a few more yeah. minutes, I'll let you keep working, and we'll yeah. bring Todd in. Yeah, yeah? let's bring Todd in. All right. Everyone at home, I want to introduce you to Todd Tittle. Todd is uh, on staff at Dyson. Yeah. He helped us get this all together. He's a hairdresser that works for Dyson and developing the tools and connecting with hairdressers. And as soon as we came in last week, I said, you know what, if we're going to do this, we have to see the new air wands. Everybody excited to see the air wands? Cool. So we're going to bring back Drew's model. Hey, Drew, come back out here. Let's talk about your finish. And then Todd's going to use the air wand a little bit. Looks so, beautiful. Yeah. So, as I said earlier, I like heavier feel, so uh, if this were going to be the end of it, I would add a lot of oil, heavy products, then mattify it with some dust, some dry shampoos, uh, to get the full effects of the Dyson Erewhon, we're going to leave it as B, but imagine the idea of, of all of that, and then Todd's going to blow your minds with some, some cool stuff with the Erewhon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Todd, let's see the All magic right. of the air so, one. Yeah, so, yes, great job, Drew. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. So you're going to come right here with me. So Dyson Air Wrap. Just Air Wrap, air wrap. sorry. Yes. No, sorry. it's great. It's great. So we're, uh, we're going to just enhance Drew's finish a little bit using the Air Wrap. Uh, this is the product that all your clients are asking you about. If they haven't already, they will be. Um, and it's a it wet to dry styler. So it's actually designed to work with the hair being damp or starting from a damp position. So I'm just gonna actually take this case, dampen it down a bit. We don't want it soaking wet, but just enough to where we can reset those bonds. So Drew talked about that earlier, and it's the same idea, same concept. We wanna reset the bonds in the hair from wet to dry. So we're gonna take the case, 
What's cool about this machine is that when you kick it on, it uses the power of air to wrap the hair around that barrel. So you guys can see that, right? Where it just literally causes the hair to wrap around. It's not using any mechanical mechanism or anything, and I just move it closer to her head. And so that the is air is just sucking it around like a cyclone around The there. air is creating like a vortex around that barrel. What are the chances that the hair would get stuck in some wow. ill way that you can't get it out? Great what are the, what the, are the hair, possibilities of that? The, it's zero possibility. The hair actually cannot be. Well, there's nothing for it to get stuck there's in. No, there's nothing mechanical for it to get stuck on. So when it wraps, I can literally pull it away, and the air is not sucking in. It's blowing around. So in any texture, in any density, in any curl pattern, there's no way for hair to get stuck within That's the machine. Correct. No Unlike the brush that gets stuck. That's right. Wow. So you can see, wow. it makes these really nice voluminous curls, and when you run your hand through, it's not a tight, like, clamped curl. It's it's open. It's airy. Um, <laughs> it's that more modern feel. Well, more you're really blowing at everyone's mind. <laughs> uh, Tamika says, what sorcery is this? It is. <laughs> I wish I could take all the credit for it. We just have really, really incredible yeah. engineers. I mean, literally, yeah. there's like little uh, vents where the air blows and it blows it around. So there's nothing right. for it to get caught in. I have another question as well. Now, sometimes, often, when we're doing these, we see Silas curl one way and then curl another way. Absolutely. Is there possible with this? It is. So you see that there's arrows on the barrel, right? So those arrows indicate the direction that the hair is going to wrap. So when you get the machine, both the barrels come in, each size barrel comes with two different directionals. So you can actually switch this out. So it might be best to do all your curls going one way, leave and out leave some out hair, section, yeah, and, and then, then go, go back, back in. It gives you creative freedom to choose what exactly. you want to do. Exactly. And I mean, look at that effect in just two seconds on right. uh, very heavy hair. That's very heavy, amazing. straight hair, not bad. Right. It works really, really great on this hair type, and it will really hold her. Now, that, uh, we have a question from Courtney O. Uh, that has a filter as well, so it's it the same. That needs to be cleaned. Same exact, it actually uses the same exact motor as the Supersonic, so the Dyson V9 motor in the handle, and the same filtration system as the Professional Edition, so it's the same idea, the same cleaning, because it's it's using air, so it's, it's pulling, it's drawing air through. Clean Pretty cool. Can you awesome. talk about the heat level in this? I hear there's heat involved in this tool. There is. So again, same idea with supersonic in that it's intelligent heat control. So it's, it's measuring and monitoring the temperature 40 times every second to ensure that it never goes above 302 degrees. So when you think about how that compares to a curling iron, that's typically much higher than that. We're really caring for the integrity of the hair. So, Todd, a lot of people are asking where they buy the, the air yes. wrap and the blow yes. dryer. Uh, if anyone at home is interested, can you let them know? Yes, if you're lucky enough right now, Dyson.com is always a great place to start. Uh, certainly, um, stock has flown off the shelves at not only Dyson.com and in our stores, but in our retail partners as well. Um, but it is available in a number of retail partners as well. And Awesome. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, thank you, guys. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's have a look, DJ. Final words on, on this incredible new wave style. And then we'll get one last look at all of our models. All right. So, Let's, uh, just do a quick uh, recap, guys. Let me have you stand up right here. Yeah, all right. So, guys, you can see from the back, the whole goal was to kind of complement what's happening with the styling, with the way we kind of just etched the shape out a little bit. Like I said, it's nothing wrong with a little bit of refinement. And then from there, just working a Dyson approach with the top area, utilizing the nozzle to be my friend. So I can just come in and get that soft type of prep with that wave in without going through a lot. Remember, with guys, I think it's great for men because you know, they don't have to really go through the way we style their hair. They can kind of just use the dryer and work off of it. And I think that's a really great achievement that you can actually do. I mean, so, and with that, just coming in with a little bit of fabric, prep spray, and then just really banging it out a little bit. You, you, got, a, like you got a fan at home, Michael. Caroline Fitzpatrick says you're one handsome model. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, awesome. Mona, let's bring your beautiful model back on here. Germania, you're looking beautiful. So sum it up for us, Mona. What? That well, final work looks incredible. So Any final thoughts? I just kind of went back and used actually the, the nozzle, which is actually really great. It's white. I just kind of went in and used it to make sure that her root is dry. Fluff it. I don't pick my client's hair, really. She doesn't need it, but it's just it's less disturbing. Beautiful it's still shape, good for Thank you. Incredible shape. And last but certainly not least, 
We're going to bring Drew back here one last time to talk about his beautiful model and his finish here. So after after we used the, the Dyson, we went through and just kind of added a little bit more heaviness and moisture to let it sit. I uh, Something that always happens is, uh, you know, it gets fuzzy and kind of like does its own thing. So getting something to let it sit and just kind of like sink into itself was the purpose. So a little bit of cream oil after uh, everything did everything else. So we're in good shape. Awesome. Let's hear one more time for these incredible stylists. Thank you. A very special thank you to the team at Dyson for reaching out and sharing this space. Thank you to all the incredible hairdressers who joined us live and everyone at home. Peace out, guys. We'll see you again real, real soon. Thank you. Bye.